So I do want to be clear, how do we date the Sphinx? What kind of evidence w archaeologically are we using? Mm -hmm. And so what that comes from is largely radiocarbon dates from the pyramids themselves. So pieces of wood that were in, the, in between the blocks of the pyramids have been radiocarbon dated and definitively s tell us that the, the pyramids were built during the Old Kingdom, right? But didn't they do work on the pyramids at multiple stages? Where they would probably like reseal things and surface things and clean things. If they were constructed 12, 13, 20,000 years ago and people were still inhabiting them 5,000 years ago, wouldn't it make sense that they would do things to them? Well, we have inscriptions in there from areas that are sealed off from the actual construction, graffiti from the workmen, referring to, for example, Friends of Khufu mm. and different workmen gangs that are in there. And these are in areas... It's graffiti, like they tagged you know it? Yeah, yeah, you they know tagged that, it, exactly. <laughs> you know and that these that, are that particular graffiti in the Khufu cartouche has long been suggested as a forgery by Howard Vise. Except it uses versions of Khufu's name that were not known until later by, by scholars. Mm. And so that's... that's what, what versions are those? I don't know, man. <laughs> oh. I don't read hieroglyphs. Well, I where read do you get that information? Egyptologists. Where did you get that information from? Um, I got Zawi that Hawass. <laughs> no, not from Zahi Hawass. <laughs> I've never met Zahi Hawass. I got that information from reading, man. <laughs> um, but okay, so let's go back. How do we know that these radiocarbon dates with the blocks in the pyramid relate to the Sphinx itself? Because the Sphinx is just hewn out of natural stone, right? These different layers here. Mm -hmm. So the reason we know is because uh, geochemists have done stone sourcing on the, the chemistry of these stones in the pyramids. And they've been able to trace them to different quarries at Giza. And so this is photos of different quarries and cuttings for the quarries. And so they've taken samples from the quarries themselves and from the stones in the pyramids. They do uh, different qu kinds of geochemical analyses to show the ratios of, in this case, magnesium and iron. Um, and then they trace them back to specific quarries there. And so they know that a bunch of the stones from Khafre, for example, come from the area of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is from a quarry. It's a quarry site for those stones. And so... One of the things. Go back I to that slide for a second. Yeah. We're cut into the quarry walls. <coughs> okay. And so this is a photo of some of these quarries, and I want to point out that the, the quarry walls look a lot like exactly the walls of the Sphinx itself. It has the same kind of erosion on it. It has the same kind of rough working on it. And so what you're actually seeing with the Sphinx is you're seeing this roughened shape from quarrying, which is then built with nicer stones around it. Right, but we're talking about the temple, the Sphinx, the outside structure is what Robert Schock was discussing. That, that shows much more clear indication of the water erosion. Not not necessarily this, which shows a lot of kind of different erosion. And by the way, this restoration on the pores of the Sphinx is modern. Yes, yeah, that is yeah, modern. modern. I'm not going to deny that. But what I'm that? trying to explain to you is that we can't... It, A, I don't think that anybody really agrees with shock that it is erosion. B... If it we is erosion, date, well, a lot of geologists do not. Nor but do many, many geologists do. Many geologists very do few, agree with them. Very few. I think it's quite a bit. Graham, you know. would know more than I do. I think it's quite a bit too, but it doesn't really matter to me. I think, I think whether, whether geologists agree with him or not, whether archaeologists agree with him or not, he's spoken his truth, he's made his case, and I think it's a strong and compelling and case. And what I'm trying to do is present the evidence that goes against him, right? But, but when you look at those fissures that are in that wall... You see the same thing on quarries there. You know, it's the same exact kind of fissures on this. is just a completely different quarry in a different that, area of Giza. That's not the most specific example of it, though. If you show other examples of that wall. And so, I mean... There's other examples you know, of that wall that are much more rounded out. So I have been to Giza, in. by the way. See, this just doesn't Good. look the same to me. Wait, but I have a reason for saying that. I've okay. been to Giza. The one time I went to Giza, it rained. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the taxi got into an accident because the oil on the, on the road got so slick that we were hit from behind. Right, it does rain. Very minor fender bender. But the right, point but is, you're not denying but that how the, do you, the climate how do you radically date, changed How that do you area. date erosion like this? That takes a lot of experimentation, and I've seen no evidence that shows how to date this kind of erosion to 12,000 years ago or something Are like that. Are you in control of the thing now? Is that what's I going am, on? and I was going to show Graham, some... can you show images from what you were looking at when it, it, it shows the water erosion? Because it's... Sure. It's it looks very different. The the images that Graham was showing from the where Robert Schock did his work, it's much more extreme. The ones that you have are from a distance, and the other ones are kind of blurry. And you're looking at it, and it looks similar. But like I was that, there in 2003, <laughs> so it's I'm been a sure long time. I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. But the like this is different. 
this the the fissures in there are different. They really look like water flow. And if you're talking about the different lay- layers of stone, <laughs> which are softer in some layers and harder in other, if you did have that kind of water flowing through it, it would make sense that the softer layers would be more eroded. And that's Robert Schock's contention. And how are you going to date that, though, to however long ago? One of the other key disproof... Well, don't oh, you date it, though, but don't you date it, though, by the amount of rainfall that we know took place at no, a certain time? because a small amount of rainfall can also cause erosion, especially in a dry environment. So right, in very it, dry it environments, a tiny amount of rainfall can actually damage things even worse because things are so dry. But that level of erosion? Well, but you need to come up with some independent way of dating it, okay. right? And that's why, that's where the issue is. What we do have is independent confirmation that the blocks in the pyramid came from the quarry right there. Right. And we have dates on those blocks from radiocarbon dates of wood in between those blocks. There's an area where my, my work is misunderstood. I strongly support Robert Schock on the 12,000-year-old dating of the Sphinx and of the megalithic temples in front of the Sphinx. I've never claimed that the pyramids are 12,000 years old. Oh, I know. It didn't say you I have. didn't say I you know did either. I know some people do, yeah. though. Some people do. Yeah, some I've, people I've, do. I've never claimed that. I, 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 I do not seek to divorce the, the ancient That is Egyptians why I brought up from the, the, the notion pyramids. that they'd been resurfaced, because that's yeah. the claim. Yeah, I've heard that claim as that well. That you know, people had been living in them for thousands of years, and so that the material that you're dating is from that time period. Yeah. And what do you make of the hieroglyphs that show kingdoms going back thirty thousand years? I've never heard that, so I have no comment. It's in it's in all the king lists of the. Of the oh, you mean the dating of that? Yeah. Well, so there's a lot of issues with the way that those are dated because they're not precisely dated. It's just generations. So it's about how you interpret that kind of stuff. But it's still. It becomes an issue of mythology. Are they adding in extra generations there and stuff like that? Or, or are they actually reporting their truthful memory of their past? Well, but we'd want to have directly dated evidence of that. We well, You might want to have that. I, well, I yeah, agree. I think if we're going to talk about archaeological evidence, we need directly dated stuff. And one of the things that's fascinating about Egypt is the discovery of older construction methods that are below, and very sophisticated, below the surface, that they, they, the different temples were built on previous construction. I mean, that happens in every culture, right. where you see sort of spaces being reused in right, different but, ways. Right, right, right. Temple of much? Horus at Edfu, where the Atlantis story is told uh, in an ancient Egyptian context, is a good example of that. Because the Temple of Horus at Edfu was, was is just the latest incarnation of a series of older temples that had stood on that, on, on that site. It, does, uh, it, 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 it is a regular issue right. in ancient Egypt. And so how much time are we talking about then? So if we go back to 4,500 years ago, which is the established date of the construction of the Great Pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around then? Mm -hmm. Edfu dates to the Ptolemaic period, so it's actually after Plato. So can I talk a second about Edfu? No, we'll come to that.